Hey friends, what's up? Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope that you're doing well. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about some fragrances that never really took off in a big way. You know, they weren't hype beasts. They weren't fragrances that were breaking best-selling records. They weren't fragrances that houses decided to build themselves around. For one reason or another, they just never took off in a massive way. They weren't nurtured and given the praise that they needed to succeed and grow and be successful. So today I'm doing what their fathers and mothers should have done, but bilked on, I'm gonna be giving them the praise that they deserve. I'm going to step in. I'm going to be their parent. Actually, that's kind of pushing it. That's kind of weird. I'm actually just gonna talk about them and, and say that they're better <laughs> than, than sometimes they get credit for. So let's check them out. So these are going to be linked in the description in case you want to check these fragrances out. Let's start here with Carolina Herrera's Chic for men. Chic, just kind of standing alone. Nobody really cares about it, even though you can still find it for a good price at discounters. It is kind of a, a black chic. <laughs> Yeah, that wasn't funny. A black chic fragrance. Okay, okay. No more of those. No more dad jokes in this video. I, I promise. Nowadays, Carolina Herrera going for those bad boy fragrances with the lightning bolt bottle design, which works out really well because I'm sure when Black Adam comes out, starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson, that they're going to come out with a uh, Black Adam bad boy collaboration fragrance. It makes sense. The lightning bolt is like the same thing in bad boy, the bottle and black Adam, the movie. So Carolina Herrera's big brain, they were thinking ahead. Yeah. Concentrating on bad boy. Then you've got the CH men fragrances that come out every year. Chic, no love. It's a really easy to wear fragrance. It's sweet, has a nice note of watermelon in there. Very fresh as well. And Chic is actually a decent name for it. It's got that almost blue fragrance versatility, year round versatility, good compliment factor. But even though it's fresh and, and sweet, it's also got a touch of class to it. It's a good scent. The bottle is a little mm, blocky. Looks like it came out of Minecraft or something, but the fragrance pretty darn good. Then we're going to go to a fragrance that is a personal favorite of mine. It is Gucci Pour Homme, also known as Gucci by Gucci Pour Homme. I've said this before, but I'll say it once again. On some fragrance discounter websites, this fragrance will actually be listed as Gucci by Gucci by Gucci, which I think is just overkill. We friggin' get it. We understand, okay? It's Gucci, but that is because the name uh, originally was Gucci by Gucci. And then at a lot of these discounters, it'll be like the fragrance name by the house. So Gucci by Gucci by Gucci. Now I think this is just Gucci Pour Homme. They did do a, a very slight bottle redesign. So mine is technically the old bottle design, but really the only thing they changed is like what it reads on the front. I think everything else is pretty much the same, slight change to the box, but no big deal. So this one is an amazing smelling tobacco fragrance, but it doesn't go as far down that pipe tobacco side of things that you'll find in a lot of designer scents, you know, the ones that are very, very sweet. This one instead is fresh and spicy. It's slightly sweet, but not in a honeyed type way and a good amount of woodiness to this one, uh, making a special use of the note of cypress. I have always loved this fragrance, especially for spring and fall time use. It's another one that smells very classy, very gentlemanly. The one drawback with this fragrance is the performance is not amazing. And for a fragrance that's making use of spicy notes and woods and tobacco, you would hope it would pump out a little bit stronger for a little bit longer. But it does smell so good that frankly, I don't really care. And uh, it's another one that just kind of didn't really take off in any big kind of way. It does have a flanker made to measure and then also Gucci Intense Oud came in the same bottle style, but that's pretty much it. Gucci is mainly about that guilty line. Now a newer one from Baldi Serini, Signature. It has a very simple bottle design, but it looks good. It's really heavy actually. It doesn't cost too much from discounters and has a similarity to Creed's Aventus. And it's actually a really, really good alternative to Aventus. The quality here, quite nice, all things considered. This is one of those interesting things when you're talking designer fragrances that are a bit similar to Aventus. You have Mont Blanc Explorer, which is massively popular, probably the most popular fragrance from the house at this point, Mont Blanc. And then you have other ones like this one, and Perry Ellis America that are in their own right just as good as Explorer, 
but don't get even one tenth the amount of love. So Signature, I wanna let you know, you're a really nice designer alternative to Aventus. Your price is not too bad. Your bottle is heavy and dense, and I appreciate that. Okay, let's go to Cavalli Womo next. Uh, Womo, a sad case. Why sad? Well, the bottle, nice looking. Really, really like it. Looks good, good quality. Everything about this shows attention to detail for a designer house. That's good. Fragrance, very inexpensive from discounters. I know the brand probably doesn't like that, but me, as a consumer, I like that. So, not expensive. Easy to get your hands on. The quality of the fragrance itself, very good as well for the price. Really nice. It's got good versatility, good complement factor. It's a nice fall fragrance. Decent winter, even spring possibly. It is heavy on violet, but it's done in a way that's still very approachable. And, and, multiple flankers, all of which are very good, even better than the original. So all of that's good. All of that is good news. Each flanker better than the last? Ah, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to some more Cavalli Womo fragrances. What a great hidden gem under the radar fragrance line. Used to be, these Womo fragrances you could find pretty consistently, always for that good price, 50 bucks or under. They were great compliment pulling fragrances. Like I said, the quality of the fragrance is much higher than you'd expect. La Note, Deep Desire, Silver Essence, all these fragrances, solid. But for whatever reason, never really took off. And so now they're getting killed off. And this is the last one that you can find with any kind of regularity at discounters, so that sucks. Cavalli Womo, really like this. Yeah, what can I say, wish it, I wish it did better. Next one is from Lolita Limpica. It's Limpica Ohm. This is the new bottle design. I also have the old bottle design. There's a slight difference between the two fragrances, but for 99% of people, it's not gonna be worth it to go pay more for an older bottle unless you just like to collect older bottle styles. I do like this new bottle style though. I like the wooden cap. I like the, the bottle that looks like it's been kind of twisted a little bit. It's cool. Unfortunately, Lolita Olympica puts out a whole bunch of nothing as far as men's fragrances go. They had Green Lover, which is actually really good and not very green, and this. And that's, that's pretty much it at this point. They had some other fragrances from before but those are discontinued now, so what are you gonna do? So what I love about this fragrance is it makes use of licorice, which is a note not used very often in men's fragrances, at least not in a way that puts it at the forefront of the fragrance. It's a note that this fragrance is built around. Oftentimes, licorice in the men's fragrance, in the designer realm especially, is kind of on the outskirts. Like you pick it up a little bit, it's a supporting note, but it's not the star of the show. Here, it is. And I really like the way this fragrance is done. I, I think it's quite unique as far as designers go, but that also plays against it to an extent because not too many men out there looking for a Lolita Limpica men's fragrance and probably even fewer men are looking for a Lolita Olympica men's fragrance that is centered around licorice. Up next, Armani Eau de Romes. Eau, Eau, Eau de Romes. Eau de Romes. This line of fragrances in general, is actually really good. The quality is very nice on these fragrances, but obviously when you're talking Armani, they can't really hold a candle in terms of popularity to the Aqua de Jo line, the Code line, or the Emporio Armani Stronger With You line. This one has very good quality, very gentlemanly, very sophisticated, but at the same time, very wearable as well. It has a, a slight, slight throwback feel to it. It has citrus in the opening, it's got ginger, it has vetiver, got patchouli in there, a little bit of sage, it's, um, it's absolutely the type of fragrance that you would expect somebody middle-aged or older in a suit driving to bins to wear. So it's not gonna have that same, you know, ostentatious in your face compliment factor that some of the other more popular Armani fragrances are gonna have, but as a, a low key, very classy scent, that's good for spring, summer, or early fall, it excels. Let's get a cheap one in here, Lalique Pour Homme. Now it's not that this is devoid of love. All these really are not devoid of love. It's just they aren't from their houses, uh, the fragrance that anybody's looking for. So Lalique Pour Homme is a bit similar to Creed's Bois du Portugal. So this is another fragrance 
that's very classy and gentlemanly and sophisticated and grown up and mature or whatever you want to call it. It has lavender, rosemary, citrus, oak moss, of course, and uh, it is a fragrance, kind of like the last one, that is going to appeal more to middle-aged guys and older. But if you're looking for an inexpensive fragrance that smells actually way, way more expensive than it costs, that's going to be a great, versatile, classy, mature fragrance, check this stuff out. And the bottle's pretty slick too, really like it. Got that lion kind of engraved into the glass on the backside that you see as you look through. It's slick. Next up, a fragrance I talk about every so often, Trissardi Reflesso. Smells a little similar to La Nuit de Lome, and it's very inexpensive. The quality of the fragrance is quite good, and nobody cares. I was surprised a while back, and I've mentioned this before, when I was looking at the bestsellers on Macy's. And at the time, I went to the very like last page and I was looking at the worst sellers for men's fragrances on Macy's. And there were some fragrances I'd never heard of, stuff that made sense for it to be that low. Sorry to you low selling fragrances. And this was right in there with them, Reflesso. Just nobody buying it. Multiple reasons, I'm sure. Trissardi, not really a name that people in the US are probably looking for. They're looking for Armani or Dior or Gucci or Versace or whatever. Trissardi doesn't have quite the same cachet. And then the bottle is nondescript. Nothing about this really jumps out and grabs your attention, at least not compared to some of the other big sellers out there. Actually, I've seen a number of people say that they think this is one of the ugliest designer bottles. I don't think it's that ugly. It feels pretty good in the hand. And it also doubles as a washboard. This is a really good compliment pulling fragrance though. It even has a little more push than La Nuit de Lome. And it does have, like I said before, that similarity to La Nuit, which people absolutely go crazy for. So if you're looking for an inexpensive alternative to that fragrance, check this stuff out. It's not the exact same, but it'll get you a similar vibe. Speaking of fragrances like that, uh, La Nuit de Lome-ish fragrances. How about this one? Guess Seductive Ohm Blue. So it's really the cardamom in the opening here that gets this compared to La Nuit de Lome. But you could think of this more as like a fragrance that has a La Nuit de Lome-ish opening, but freshened up. And then as the fragrance dries down, it maintains that freshness more as opposed to La Nuit de Lome going into more of a fall winter time. Uh, direction. So this is more like a spring summer La Nuit de Lome ish fragrance. And with this one, if Reflesso is too expensive for you, this is even cheaper. So this is like, you know, scraping the bottom of the barrel as far as pricing goes with fragrances, but the quality is actually pretty nice. Performance could be a little bit better, but when you're paying next to nothing for a fragrance, that doesn't matter too much. Guest Seductive Ohm, really solid scent that I think for a lot of guys, especially younger guys that don't have too much money to spend, is an awesome pickup. Last one is from Lacoste. This did spawn a line of fragrances, a couple of flankers, but I haven't heard anything on the line for a while. And it's almost like Lacoste has just kind of forgotten about it, frankly, because they're going on with their L1212 flankers, their Match Point flankers, and this is just off to the side somewhere, forgotten, very sad. Like a, a poor puppy that's dropped off in front of a, a pound, you know, in front of an animal shelter, just left there alone. It's Lacoste Loam. Loam. Inexpensive from discounters, and the packaging is definitely not the best thing that Lacoste has ever done. It's just a very plain bottle that says Lacoste Loam and a, a cheap cap that weighs nothing. Like I said, nowadays, uh, apparently they're concentrating more on Match Point, on their L1212 flankers, things like that. I'd, I'd really like to see this one come back. I mean, they, they've actually brought back some of their old fragrances into new bottle styles, but they're, they're not giving me any new loam. Love the opening to this fragrance. Citrus and rhubarb mixing together, very fresh, very lively with a slight tart hint. Smells really good. And as it dries down, it maintains that freshness, that bit of sweetness to make this a very appealing, very versatile fragrance, easy to pull off in high heat situations or neutral heat. So really good for spring through fall. It's an office safe fragrance. It's got great appeal. Younger guys can wear this easily middle-aged guys can wear this. It, it's not like overly youthful to the point of being like bubble gum and just overly harsh synthetic sweetness, but it's also not a mature fragrance either. So you have great versatility here. For the cost, Lacoste Loam is an awesome pickup. 
and I hate to see that it's kind of dying on the vine to an extent. Lacoste Loam Intense, possibly the best of the whole line, and that one is also pretty easy to pick up. So there we go, guys. 10 fragrances that just weren't encouraged enough. Very sad. I encourage you. All of you are special in your own way. Now go out there and succeed. Just playing there. Don't tell these fragrances, but it doesn't look good. No, it's good, you guys. Nice, good job. Let me know in the comments, guys, some of the fragrances that you think deserve a little more love. Fragrances that were unceremoniously not given the support that they should have kicked to the curb. Thank you all for hanging with me here until the end. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.